Tamale Ghana is one of those cities that a lot of travelers use as a pass-through. They come in through the airport usually, and then they are on their way to Mole National Park, and they pass right through it, and a lot of times they barely stop and see it ever at all. Well, the truth is, there is a lot here to see. Even if you just leave a few hours or a half day or an extra day or two in this city, you won't be disappointed. There is plenty to do, and all it takes is a little planning. Everything I'm going to show you, I've gone and done with the help of my friend Abdullah, who is also a tour guide. I will definitely put Abdullah's contact information in the description. So it's time to start our list. These are the best things to do in Tamale, Ghana. Coming in at number nine is visiting the Shea Butter Factory. And it's not a factory per se, in, except in that it's all human run. And I should say all women run. Shea Butter is a big industry here. It's used for everything from traditional medicine to cosmetics. And the women here, they go, they pick the nuts, they bring them back, they crush them, they dry them, and they pulverize them into a powder, and then they mix them back into a concentrate. And there's all these things they do, and they do a wonderful job. They were a little shy about being on camera, but they will be happy to give you a tour and show you how they work. It's one of those industries that really empowers women here, and it's a great insight into women-owned businesses. Next up is Red Clay. Red Clay is the studio, gallery, and artist retreat created by contemporary Ghanaian artist Ibrahim Mahama. He is especially famous for his installation works, like this piece with all of the antique shoeshine boxes, as well as his performance art. What's really cool here is Mahama really likes to use old materials and they have meaning to him. And he recycles them in ways that are very interesting. So there's a lot of antiques around. He's even gone so far as to bring in old airplanes and old train cars, which he is transforming, restoring and transforming into classrooms for students to teach them art. And then what's really cool on that is for the performance side of things, he's creating a theater. Well, the theater, they're gonna use the seats from the airplane in the theater, so it all connects. When a lot of people think of Africa, all they think of are the traditional arts, and it's a really nice breath of fresh air to see the works of a contemporary Ghanaian artist. So the next item on the list is one thing with a bunch of sub things, and that's visiting artisan workshops. I really enjoy meeting artists and in their workshops and finding out how they work, how they think, and what their thought processes are. This is where having a guide comes in handy because pretty much most of them didn't speak much English. What's really cool here too, is that a lot of people are just working out of their homes and so you end up going out to their village and so you get a glimpse of village life too, just as it is. Nothing is put on, nothing is shined up or spit polished just for your visit. You get to see the place the way it really is and you get to meet the people where they really are. Here's a few of the artisan workshops you can visit. So we went to see Lobby the Potter. No fancy equipment, real simple, and I have to say, her family and her compound were very welcoming. It was really fun to see where she lived and worked. What's even cooler is she gets her clay from really nearby. When I asked, they said it was local, and I said, how local? And she's like, oh, it's just over there. So I'm betting she has the, the younger people go and dig up clay for her. And when she was working, she had a shaping tool, and I asked her about it, and it turns out she was using a mango seed from the mango tree in her yard. Very practical. Of course, potters in general are very practical. But she built this pot in like a flash. It was like no time at all. And she was just hand building and she did it and she was talking the whole time. And it was just really enjoyable being there. And on the way out, I got to see the big pots. I mean, big pots. And I did ceramics in high school and college to some degree. And I know you can't do those all in one shot. She said that those take a week to make because you'd have to build it, let the structure dry a little, and then build some more. And just to know that she does that by hand, just like she does the little ones, is really amazing. And like the potters in Senegal that I have a video on, link in description, they use a fairly simple firing method where they put the pots down and then they cover it up with combustible material, set it on fire, and that gets it fired. And for as much as I did the video on the potters in Senegal, you can, if you compare the two, their hand building methods, while technically similar, were actually really different. Seeing Lobby work in her pottery workshop was just a delight and it was a really nice visit. Definitely one of my favorite things. 
We also went to see Katumi, and she makes quilts. Now, they're not the big, thick, super stuffed quilts that you'll see in Europe and the U.S. because it just doesn't get that cold here. Uh, she can do a plain one, or it can have a lining on the back. They just don't make them super thick and fluffy. But I have to tell you, Katumi's place is the first time I have ever been chased by a chicken. And I'll tell you that in a minute. But we went out to her house and she just sits there and she has the sewing machine, the manual sewing machine, and she's stitching together these pieces of fabric. And she said that she does choose. She does, she's not just randomly putting any pieces together. She's choosing to make sure they look good together. And what's really cool is her materials come from the tailor. They are leftovers from the tailor, but she still picks them out carefully. She doesn't choose black base fabric, and she chooses the patterns that she thinks will work best. I have to say, I actually ended up getting a quilt because I needed something to cover one of my chairs because in the hot season, a leather chair is not fun. So I have this beautiful quilt over my chair, and I had a really nice time with her and her kids. Katumi was awesome. She was a, a real artist um, in the way she designed these quilts. Oh, the chicken story. Okay, so I was filming, and as you can see, the, the living working area was really just kind of this L shape, and I wanted to go around the other side to see, just get a different uh, angle of picture. Well, I went to go out, and there were these little puffy chicks, oh, no, and I was doing everything I could not to step on them and the one chick was doing everything it could to get under my foot. Well, Mama Hen saw this and she ran at me and she, she brushed my calf, uh, but she either saw that her chick was actually gonna be safe or she just knew not to hurt the human, uh, but she was doing everything she could to protect her little chick and I don't blame her one bit, but that is my first time being chased by a chicken. And I'm a city kid, so if you're sitting there and you're somewhere rural and you're just laughing your butt off, that is completely fine. Uh, I'm a city kid and there are chickens around here all the time, but that's the first time I've been chased by one. So if you're vegan or even vegetarian, this next one might not be for you, but there is a leather works here. I will say that they get the hides from the butcher shop. No animals are being killed just for leather. They are using all parts of the animal. But what you get to see when you're here is the whole process from when they get it, they soak it in water and ash, and then they have to get the hair off, and then they have to condition it more, and it goes into other solutions. All natural. This place is all natural. They do not use anything chemical. It through, goes through several processes before it's ready to be dyed. And then they have all these different mixes, these natural mixes, to dye it any color you want or their customers want. And then it gets used in furniture, not really in clothing here, because as I say, it's hot. There's no one walking around in leather jackets. I was really impressed with the quality of the leather that they finished with, though. It could have made a jacket. It was soft, it was well-colored, and it was really just top grade. If you've ever been curious about this process, this is the perfect place to see it, because it's a small workshop and they do a really nice little tour. The next item on the list, I actually did a full video about. If you saw my video on batik, that is my next best thing to do in Tamale Ghana. My top souvenir suggestion, my favorite thing, is to get a shirt made. Now, you've probably seen me wear my other colorful shirts, and I completely agree with that. Get a cool fabric that you like, go to a tailor, and get either a shirt, a dress, a singlet, whatever you want to wear. Get a fabric you love and have something made. The tailors here are great, they don't cost a lot, and they can get things done pretty quickly. But making batik and having a shirt I made all my own is really cool. I mean, it's still the African thing, but it's also my thing, and I just really love having a shirt that I made. I'm gonna highly recommend that you do the batik class. She has all these stamps to choose from. You could alternate, you could do all one pattern, you could put spritzel uh, drop, drip drops all over it. It's just fun. You can create anything you want. If you're not looking for a piece of clothing, you can use it for curtains or tablecloth or placemats, whatever you like. Batik fabric has a lot of uses. I just wanna say it was a really fun experience and I highly recommend it. One of the best things to do. Another thing that's all over tamale that you should definitely partake in is the street food. There's street food of all kinds. In the morning, there's a bunch of porridges and donuts, uh, bufrot, 
and sweet ba for the donuts. But beyond breakfast, come lunchtime, there's meat skewers, egg skewers, pincasso, some things I don't know the name of, grilled sausage. There are snacks and food worth trying everywhere. And my suggestion is just try it. And if you don't like the first thing, try something else. And even if it's something you don't normally think you like, try it again because they may make it differently here. And even if it looks weird, give it a try. The worst that happens is you don't like it. So definitely, while you're out and about and you see something, you're feeling a little peckish, say, hey, let's try some street food. Almost needless to say, a lot of the street food is around the market area, and it's actually more on the outer edge than deep inside, because that's where they're going to get most traffic for people who want a quick snack. So if you're wondering the best place to get it, just head straight to the market, and you'll definitely find something to try. Going to the Chief's Palace here in Tamale Ghana is not like going to Windsor Castle. You don't get to just walk up and buy a ticket and get a tour. It doesn't work like that. There are special processes and procedures you must go through in order to be invited to visit the Chief's Palace. This is where Abdullah comes in wonderfully because he is actually part of the royal family that has the Chief's Palace here in the center of Tamale. In addition to that, even if you want to go out to a chief's palace that's in one of the more village areas, because every area does have its own chief, he knows everybody there too. He can arrange it wherever you want to go, whether you want to keep it in the city or go rural for your chief's palace experience. The first step to visit the chief's palace is to go to the market, that wonderful central market that I'm going to talk about in a minute, and buy some kola nut. You buy a collection of kola nuts that you're going to give to the chief as an offering. What I found interesting is they accepted the offering and then gave me several back. Just so you know, kola nuts are attributed a great number of medicinal qualities, but the biggest thing is they are full of caffeine. And if you chew on them, it's like chewing on it. It's like a cup of coffee. The truth is though, they're kind of bitter and they're not going to be to everyone's taste. So you can try them if you want. Uh, but really just expect a, a caffeine type jolt uh, from a cola nut. After you get the cola nuts, Abdullah will take you to the chief's palace and then they talk to one person who talks to another person and they arrange for you basically to be received. Now the official chief was not there the day that I went but the, I don't know if they were officially sub chiefs, the people he left in charge welcomed me. So once you are received, they will do some pictures and they will show you around and they will tell you what different things are for. And then they do things like they show you the chief's stables and they show you where his wives live and where the extended family lives. And it's not a huge, huge place, but it is an important place. It is definitely an interesting cultural experience, well worth your time. The next thing on our list is one of my favorite things to do here, and that is simply to ride in a yellow yellow. This is a yellow yellow, and this is a yellow yellow, and this is a yellow yellow, and this is a yellow yellow. There are yellow yellow yellows, but not all yellow yellows are yellow. It's not exclusive to Tamale, but there are so many yellow yellows here that it is just easy, grab a ride, go somewhere, have fun. These semi-open tricycles are cheap and easy to get around, easy to flag down. If you do a shared ride, you might meet someone and have a nice little conversation, or you might not. I had a really stinky ride the other day. This woman had this big thing of dried fish, and then on top of that was another uh, bowl with uh, dried fish on it. She was obviously selling them, but yeah, that was honestly the stinkiest yellow, yellow ride I'd ever been on. I'd never been on a stinky one before. And then sometimes you get into a conversation, and it's always good to just say good afternoon or good morning to whomever is in the vehicle when you get in or when they get in. And you don't have to do a shared ride. You can do a private ride. And if there's two or three of you, you're going to end up with a private ride. But it's all good. The combination of open but semi-covered and comfortable makes Yellow Yellows a, a great ride around town. And they're pretty much how everyone gets around. If you don't have a vehicle and you need to go into or out of town, you just grab a Yellow Yellow. They're all over the place. And as I say, they're a fun ride. So while you're here, even if you're on a tour, even if you have a private driver, make it a point to just take a yellow yellow somewhere. I'll tell you a little secret. If you're a coffee lover, pretty much this place runs on Nescafe. So this is a perfect combination with the yellow yellow, the yellow, yellow ride. 
is there are two places in town that I know of so far that serve real coffee and real espresso. And that is Wooden on one end of town and Shea Mary on the other. So whichever one you want to go to, I say take the one that is the longer yellow yellow ride away from you. Just for the fun and it's a great way to tour the town and you'll end up driving through the market area, which is a great way to get a feel for it without necessarily having to be in the thick of it. Just take a yellow yellow ride. You won't regret it. It's all sorts of fun. You got to do it while you're here. So finally, let's talk about the central market. The central market in Tamale is really cool. It does just sprawl out from the center. It is the center of town. But what's really cool is I know not everyone likes to dive into the center of a market. Some people get a little claustrophobic or you just don't like being in crowds. You can either go early and avoid the crowd or you can stay on the outside edge. And that's what's the cool part. If you love diving in and you like being in the center of a market, the center is there and it is interesting and it's got all sorts of cool stuff going on. That's where you'll find the little enclaves and workshops. But as I mentioned, there's also a lot of outside. There's a lot of surface area to the market. So it's really easy to wander around the market without having to go deep inside if that's not your thing. So you can enjoy it no matter what level of involvement you like or don't like with your market. And if you do go in deep and let's say you're getting just maybe just tired or you're just like, okay, I need to get out. I need to step away. You're never too far from a way out of the center because I know sometimes I get in the center of the market and I start looking here, looking there. Next thing you know, I am thirsty. I am hungry. I am tired and I just want to get to where I'm going, but know that it'll be easy. You're not going to have to spend half an hour finding your way out of the market. I will mention that this is in an entirely local market. You are not going to find touristy stuff. You're not going to find tchotchkes and cheesy souvenirs and that sort of thing. The one thing that is really cool to find in this market, even as a tourist, is, as I said, I always recommend buying some fabric to have a garment made, whatever you want to wear. There are a number of fabric shops within the market that are just great to look through. I mean, they'll have dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of fabrics to choose from. So that's one of the best tourist things in the market. The rest is to just see the place for the way it really is. That's one of the wonderful things about going into a market is it tells you so much about the people there. Even if you just have a little bit of time, make some time to go check out the central market and see what they have to offer. The number one thing to do when you come to Tamale Ghana, if you make no extra time for anything else, stop at the National Cultural Center. Trust me on this. I did a whole big video on it. I will link that in the description, but you definitely want to come to the cultural center. In some ways, it might look like just a bunch of souvenir shops, but it's not. All of the things in the cultural center are handmade by local people. Some do come from neighboring countries and you can ask what comes from Ghana, what comes from Nigeria, what comes from Burkina Faso. They'll be happy to tell you. They'll also be happy to tell you if there's stories behind the item or where it's made or by what tribe it's made. And it's really interesting to hear the, the stories and to start to learn a little bit about the place that they come from and the people that make it. So definitely stop in at the National Cultural Center and don't treat it just like a tourist souvenir spot. Talk to the shopkeepers, ask them questions. They are very nice and friendly and they will be happy to talk to you. Just check out the video I made and you'll see what I mean. And if you're lucky, You'll be there on a day when the Tama Cultural Troupe is performing. This is a group of young people who do both traditional and contemporary dances of their own making, which is really cool. They combine modern and traditional when they do their own. And they are really wonderful. They have such energy and they are so good. Depending on the time of year, they start anywhere from 4.30 to 5 o'clock is about when you want to arrive. If you're at the Cultural Center earlier in the day, ask about it and they'll try and find out if they're going to be performing that day or not, whether you need to come back uh, when it's the right time. If you make time for nothing else, go to the National Cultural Center. You will not be disappointed. There are very cool goings on there. So that's the list. If you're visiting Tamale Ghana on your way to Mole National Park, try to arrange a few extra days so you can stop and see some of the cool stuff that goes on here because it is a really fun place to be. It's the capital of the northern region and is definitely worth your time.